This is that word that's overused. Now, how do I define culture? Connecting people. That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's it. Connecting people. That's what cultures do. Whether you're in a culture in France and you live in Paris and you speak French, that's a culture. Whether you're in your actual own uh, team meeting room, there is a culture there. Now, whether you can define it or not, that is the aspect. That is key. Whether you all speak the same language, that has to matter. If you go to France and you do not speak French, you will, you will not be able to be involved with the culture. You won't be able to connect with people. You'll communicate, shaking your head yes, waving, right? Yes and no, that's it. But you will not form a connection. When you have a culture, you are connecting. You are all on the same page, same language. We define everything in our program. There's, only, there's over 200 words in our program. Our players must know upon command. Now, I'm known as the saying coach, the slogan coach, the row the boat coach, whatever it is, that's fine. It could be too much for some. It's ours, and it doesn't necessarily change. Just like the English language, you know how to speak English. Our players know how to speak our verbiage. They don't have to know anybody else's. They just have to know ours. And that's incredibly critical as players are starting to form a foundation for the rest of their life and your season. What do I mean by that? As we move forward, this is my office. When you're talking about culture, this is my cultural wall. If I recruit one of your players, chances are he's going to have to tell me every single person on this wall. Now, this is not an IQ test. This lets me dive into the young man. There's two things I have a young man do when I sit him down when I recruit him. I say, tell me about that wall. Name those people on that wall. And the second thing is, tell me about your life from birth till now. Go. Because that's what I'm buying. There's great players everywhere, especially in the state of Texas. But when you're whittling it down to who fits my program, I've got to find a way to be right on that. And the reason why everybody's on that wall is because they were leaders, they are legendary, but they're probably hated for believing in all the right things. When you believe in all the right things, you will be different. That sounds crazy. When you do things right and you believe in the right things and you use your culture around that, you will be hated. Most of those people on that wall were either assassinated, lost their life, or went through some incredible hell their entire life just to get to where they were and then continued to make a difference. They weren't scared of that. You cannot be scared when building a culture and creating a culture. So as we move forward, how do you know your culture is actually working of connecting people? So let's say you say you have a culture. Great. How do I know it's actually working? Few things. Your best players are now your hardest workers. Our culture is now working. It was not necessarily working the first two years I was there. Year and a half at Minnesota. First two years, year and a half at Western Michigan University. Because our best players were not our hardest workers. Our best players were taking away from the connectivity of the team. You've got to find the right people, no matter what it was, to plug them in because they're the right people. That's why last year we were the youngest team in America. When I was second year at Western Michigan, youngest team in America. Then by that second year, we got our first class in there, pushed them, and played them all. That bowl game, we started eight players on offense against Georgia Tech and set records in the rushing game with all those freshmen. Now, it helps to have a 6'9", 400-pound right tackle. That's a freshman. I wouldn't consider him a freshman, right? But when you start to sit there and look at it, that's what we're looking at. Are your best players your hardest workers? If they are, you have a start or a build of something really special inside that you have to be able to build on. Two, their voice becomes your voice. It does not matter the message that you have. You could be the greatest coach you feel. You could be the greatest motivator in the world. If people don't echo your message and you don't have messengers, that's not a culture. You have to have messengers speaking your message to have a culture, my opinion. Because if it's just you, you're by yourself. You cannot play. No offense to all of you. You cannot play. Your players have to. They've got to be speaking your language, right? And you know what that means. There's three types of teams. Bad teams, nobody leads. Average teams, coaches lead. Elite teams, players will lead. Where are you? What stage are you at? I've been at all three. In two places now. And as an assistant coach, numerous places. And when you sit there, it doesn't say great players. It doesn't sit there and say deep team. It doesn't sit there and say great quarterback. It talks about the actual team that's connected. Everyone in a culture. 
And when you have nobody leading besides yourself, you're not going to be any good. You're not going to be any good. When you have to do everything eh, and your assistants do, you'll be average. You can get away with having great players, but you're going to be average. You'll win some games. But when you have an elite team, that message is echoed over, 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 and over. This is our culture. We're one of the only programs in America that actually name their culture. I like to ask coaches that I go visit all over the country because I love to do that. Tell me about your culture. And then you got to sit down for four hours. We just call it the hyper culture. Some call it the row the boat culture. Row the boat's part of hyper. Hyper is not spelled right. I know that. It's an acronym. It stands for five things, whether it's business, whether it's football, you need these things to be successful inside your culture. And it's very easy. That's why I invented that. That's why I'm not very smart. I needed something I could be able to say very easy. I'm pretty hyper, so it fit. What is it? It's very simple. The H is how. Yours, res process, result, and response. Those are the five things. Now, I'm going to talk about what each one of those means. 